guys, I've done it. Today, in this video, I'm giving you a tutorial on how to build every redstone contraption in the Dream SMP prison. There are timestamps listed, so you can get to any particular build you want to go to. We will be going over the portal entrance, the locker key, the physical exam using harming potions, the rising bridge, the flying machine through lava, and the final flying machine in the main room. There is one other redstone build, of course, in the Dream SMP prison, and that is the 7x7 vault door. I'm not going to give a tutorial for this, although I do have a world download that I found from a particular YouTuber. I will credit him. I would give a tutorial, but it would just take a very long time, maybe in some other video. Either way, if that's what you need, the download is in the description. Alright, so the portal. You walk in here, you press the button, you wait for the warden, all of a sudden, the portal's lit and you can go through, and after you leave, the portal breaks itself again. We'll come around here to the back. This is probably the simplest design here, and I'll show you how to build it. Now, I'm assuming the pistons and the dispensers are pretty obvious. You're going to need redstone torches that power both of these pistons, and for these dispensers, you're going to need one of these to have flint and steel to light the portal, and one of these to have water. When they get powered, you need to power the block next to them, so that it doesn't power both of them at the same time. The first thing you want to do when you turn it on is retract the pistons, which means we need this redstone line to split in two directions. Ignore the light blue right now. The first line turns off the redstone torches, retracting the pistons. The next one will power the flint and steel lighting the portal. Now, suppose you want to turn this off. We're going to use the water. We could just use a button, power this, and then have the water flow but now you've got water in your portal. So, we're going to use an observer to send two pulses. This will send a pulse as soon as the button turns on, and then it'll send a pulse right after it turns off. So now we can press this button, the water will flow, and then retract. After you build this, you'll notice a problem. The pistons don't push forward again. This is because when we turned it on, the pistons repowered, but they couldn't go forward because there was a portal in the way. So now they're in a weird glitched power state where it's on, but the pistons aren't out. Because of this, we're also going to connect this button up to the pistons again. So, as soon as I press this button now, the pistons will turn off and back on again, refreshing them. As a reminder, button one, pistons retract, portal lights. Button number two, portal is broken, pistons retract and extend again. You walk into the locker room, you press a button, and receive a key. The locker soon closes, as you can't take anything out of it, but later you can come back and drop the key, and then after a few short moments, the locker retracts, and you can take your stuff out of the chest. This design is a little complicated, so I'm going to rebuild it as I teach. Let's place our two chests, which will be our locker, and a slab where we're going to return our item. I know this isn't there on the actual prison, but my design is going to use the slab, because I honestly couldn't figure out how Awesome Jude used it without. Under the slab, we're going to place a hopper. Actually, a line of five hoppers. And the middle one is where our key is going to be kept. You see, the design we're going to use involves a comparator, and when the comparator realizes that there's enough keys in this hopper, it'll open your vault. We're going to build what's called a monostable circuit right here. That means this will get powered, but only for a split second, so we have a very short pulse. Then we're going to have a delayed repeater to give just enough delay that one book is removed from here. One book? What am I talking about? That's right, it's time to design your key. So, it really doesn't matter what your key is, I can say, hey, this is a key. You know, if you want to be all awesome dude-like, we can add some weird text so that nobody knows how to copy this. Alright, and we'll sign this, we'll call it a key. So now you're going to want to get yourself six book and quills, and you're going to make six books that are copies of the original. You could rewrite the book six times and make six originals, but that would take some time. Maybe you could copy and paste. It doesn't matter. The point is we've got six books that are copies so they can stack. Cool, so now you've got six keys. What do you do with them? You're going to put five of them in the hopper. When the sixth one comes by, it's going to register by this comparator and get dispensed back out. To dispense this back up, we're going to use two droppers and a really simple setup that will detect 
if something comes into the dropper. A comparator will sense this, then a repeater will carry the delay up to this repeater. One section will power this dropper, then a second one with a bit more delay will power this dropper, which will go into this line of hoppers and into this dropper. If that seemed confusing, watch this. Put your last key in the dropper. This is the one that will be used. When the player puts all their items into their locker, they can press the button and receive this key. Now, of course, you're going to want a piston to push a block in front of this chest so no one can open your locker. We're going to have yet a third line of redstone that detects if something is in the dropper. This line will go up and over our other hoppers and come around and hold a redstone torch in front of this piston. This way, if something detects that there is a key in here, it will retract the piston and while the player has hold of the key, the piston is active. To retract this again, we just need to drop the key in here and wait a moment. Anytime that awesome dude uses a book to give him access to a particular redstone contraption, you can use the same design there. And now it's retracted and we can take stuff out of our locker. On to tutorial number three. Awesome dude pulls a lever, pistons come up on Tommy in it, and three harming potions kill him. This one's probably pretty simple. We have our floor level here. Our first line of redstone will be two blocks down. It's this one that, uh, that activates the pistons. And then three blocks down from that, one, two, three, is the set of redstone that activates the harming potions. I've got a spiral line of redstone that comes down from the lever. In this first line of redstone, it should be pretty obvious what happens, but just so you can see, repeaters connected to the pistons power them. Remember, you want the pistons to power first, then the harming potions. Now for the harming potions, it's a little bit trickier. First, I've got my delay so that the harming potions come after. We can add a bit more delay if we'd like. Now we've got a second monostable circuit because we want this to be a short pulse. And here's why. We want this one pulse to power this dispenser three times because it will take three harming potions to kill this visitor. The first will activate through this repeater and then turn off. The second one will go through this line of delay. This is a four delay repeater. And the third, two repeaters with full delay. We will press the button. We'll see our pulse. It'll power this first, then this one, and then the third one. Sorry, my server is a little laggy. It's hard to see, but as long as you copy this set of repeaters, along with this modest able circuit, the prisoner will get poisoned three times. Make sure there's no blocks in the way so that these harming potions can have full access to killing your visitor. Design number four. This one was really hard to figure out. This one is pretty simple. It's just a line of the same exact thing over and over with alternating blocks from honey to slime. This will be four of the block. Either honey blocks or slime blocks, they alternate, so piston facing down and a piston here facing up two blocks of either slime or honey again whichever one you're doing and one observer looking down an extra observer we then need obsidian at whatever your bottom layer is to stop this from moving i'll build a second one right next to this just so you can get the design locked in your head we'll build this one with slime blocks an observer looking down at whatever will be registering the observer. I'll show you how to build that in a second. Sort of a wide T of slime blocks. Two slime blocks to the side of this. And a piston facing down diagonal from this piston facing up. On the edge, that will be your mechanism that lets you go back down. And four blocks that will be your platform that gets walked on. So at the bottom, we've got a line of obsidian that stops the thing from moving. And then... A line of redstone which will activate to move this thing up at the top we also need something made out of obsidian to stop your redstone contraption from moving and something two blocks down and one block offset which will be made out of redstone 
that allows your bridge to go back down. Suppose both of these blocks update, and the observer realizes this, your flying machine will begin going up until it hits the obsidian at the top. If we update redstone over here, the observers will detect it, and the thing will go down until it hits this obsidian, and then stop. So, you're going to need a line of redstone as far as you've got flying machines, so that when you press this button, all of them are going to update, and all of them will fly up at once. Awesome dude presses a button, you stand on the honey blocks, and this thing pushes you over a weird setup of lava that doesn't go into the void. I, I'm in a super flat world, don't worry about that. And in just a few moments, the flying machine begins to go back the way it came. To build this, we're just going to want a simple flying machine. A piston is going to face two honey blocks, and another piston will face two honey blocks the opposite direction. So it's kind of a pattern, you know. An observer will face away from this piston here, and just as the pattern follows, an observer will face away from this piston this way. Warning, before you build this thing, if you update either of these observers, your flying machine will start going off in that direction. So you're going to want to build either end of this machine's path. There's an efficient way to get this to activate. If we place a dropper next to a hopper like this, and place some basic item into the dropper. Then we can have the dropper powered from below and the dropper will update because it has to send an item into the hopper and then back, meaning your flying machine will begin moving. I'm gonna place one of these on the other end, right where the observer will end up meeting. Again, this will power the dropper from below. The dropper will already have some item in it. And when this gets powered, your flying machine will move over to this guy. If you want this coming back automatically, the way I have it set up, a button will power this dispenser and begin the flying machine going that way. And then I've got a line of repeaters come around here that I've timed just well enough that it'll power this dropper when it gets to the end. The speed of this flying machine is the same as the speed of a fully delayed repeater. Meaning, a fully delayed repeater will take just as long to let redstone pass through it as it will take for this flying machine to move one block. Design number- okay, yeah, I've totally lost count of designs at this point. In the last design, the visitor will step onto a lower platform and be told to walk with the bridge as it slides across a pit of lava to get to where the prisoner would be held. We've got yet another flying machine, but it's a little wider, and so we've got to make use of some clever tricks. It's impossible to design a flying machine like this because this piston's not going to push the slime blocks, since these slime blocks are connected to these ones, and the flying machine's just basically going to be confused. So we're going to make this part out of honey blocks, so that this thing can still move back and forth kind of the same way this guy did. Place your observers on either side, ready to update themselves. And now since this thing is two layers, we're going to need to build again, except since we're putting two flying machines next to each other, the other one needs to be built out of opposite blocks, meaning honey blocks where there were slime blocks and slime blocks where there were honey blocks. This is an alternating pattern of honey blocks and slime blocks. Again, we'll place the pistons in the same spots as before, and the observers in the same spots as before. Once again, I have a design for a thing to update your guy. You press a button, and some cheap item will go from the dropper to the hopper and back. I have this set up right here, so when I press the button, the cobblestone will leave and enter the hopper, and the flying machine will begin its journey until it reaches the other set of droppers. This would be where Dream would be awaiting the visitor. And that's all. I realize that these are very complicated. If all you want to do is trap a player, I've got two much simpler designs for prisons that you should probably check out. They're definitely not as big as that massive thing behind me. The links to those two tutorials will be in the description. So, if you know a few people that might want to learn how to build some of these redstone contraptions, consider sharing it. I'd really like to get this thing into the YouTube algorithm so more people can get these tutorials. I'll, I'll see you later. Uh, probably when I do that 7x7 vault tutorial. Oh, I'm scared.